Hello and welcome to the Lucian video tutorial series. In this video, we'll go over some tips and tricks for working with your cabinets. Now the first thing we want to go over is cabinet level files. Now I'm going to pop open Windows Explorer so we can take a look at this cabinet. You'll notice here's my cabinet folder and I have all of my drawers in the folder, but I also have these two files. These files aren't in drawers, and so they're not showing up in File Center at all. Now this question comes up every now and then, how do I display these files that are at the cabinet level? And there's a setting that will help us with that. Let's switch back to File Center and take a look at it. If we edit our cabinet, you'll notice we have an option right here. Show Cabinet's main folder as a drawer. Right now I have that set at Never, but let's change that to uh, if it contains files, or we could also select always, but I'm going to select if it contains files. Once I click that, a new drawer shows up at the top of my list called Cabinet Root. This is a special drawer that File Center creates to show you those files that are in the cabinet level. And you notice here are those two files. Let's switch back to Windows Explorer so we can take a look at them again. These two files that fall outside of drawers now show up in File Center under this special drawer called Cabinet Root. It acts just like any other drawer, but it'll always be here at the very top, and it will always show you those files that are right in the very main folder of the cabinet. For our next feature, we have users ask us all the time if it's possible to add a drawer that's not part of the cabinet itself. And here's what we mean by that. As we've seen, a cabinet is really nothing more than a folder inside of Windows. And each one of the directories in that folder show up as drawers inside of the cabinet. So is it possible to add a drawer inside of our cabinet that isn't part of this directory structure? And the answer to that is yes. If we come over here to our drawers drop list, you'll notice we have an option here called Create a Linked Drawer. Let's select that and see what it does. This is going to grab a folder from anywhere on my machine, anywhere on the network, and display it as a drawer inside of the cabinet. Now, I have out on the network a folder where all of my network faxes are placed, and I'd like to display that here in this cabinet. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to name the drawer Incoming Faxes. I, it asks what cabinet we're going to create this in. We're going to create it right here in the client's cabinet. And now we need the target path. This is the folder that's going to display as a drawer. I'm going to browse out and select that folder on my network. I'm going to hit the Escape button to uh, switch over to a regular Windows dialog. And uh, this PC, this is on my S drive on the network, and it's called Faxes. So there's my folder. I click OK and OK. And now look, at the very bottom of the list of the drawers, these will always show up at the bottom. They don't alphabetize with the drawers, but they appear at the bottom. I now have my incoming faxes drawer. And this shows the incoming faxes out on the network. Now, the important thing to note is the path of this drawer is S faxes, where the rest of my drawers are all out of my C drive. So I have succeeded in bringing in a drawer from outside of my cabinet's directory structure, but displaying it with my cabinet. It's really a great and powerful feature and a nice way to be able to add utility drawers into your cabinet. Now, you're probably already wondering, can I have a cabinet that's nothing but linked drawers? And the answer is yes, but there's a better feature than that for that, and it's called Advanced Cabinets. And we'll cover Advanced Cabinets in a separate video. Now, while we're on the subject of drawers, let's go over the Drawer Search feature. I have a cabinet here called Archived Clients, and this cabinet has hundreds of drawers in it. So scrolling to a drawer is really a time-consuming process. To make jumping to drawers quicker and easier, we've added this Drawer Search field right here at the top of the list of drawers. And the way it works is really very simple. All you do is start typing in some characters from the name of the drawer that you want to look up. Now those characters can be from the beginning of the drawer name or anywhere inside of the drawer name. Uh, as you type it, File Center is going to first search the list of drawers at the beginning of the names, and if it doesn't find anything, then it's going to search the drawers again for anything inside of the names. 
and it's going to automatically jump to whatever drawer it finds. So let's give this a shot so you can see how it works. Okay, you notice as I type, File Center is jumping around through the drawers uh, looking for anything that matches that. And in the end, I was able to find the drawer I wanted. It was the first name I was searching on, and typing in those characters got me there very quickly. So this is a nice way to very quickly navigate through your list of drawers, especially if you have a lot of them. Okay, switching gears over to the folders list. One thing that users want all the time is a way to automatically expand all of their folders. Now, we do have some options here in the Folders Task button for expanding all folders or collapsing all folders. Let's see if I select Expand. Now the whole folder tree inside of this drawer has expanded, and likewise, I can collapse all of the folders. Of course, most users don't want to have to go into that button to be able to expand all of their folders, so they say, is there a simpler way to do it? And the answer is yes. If I come into File Center Settings and select the Manage Files option on the left, I have an option here called Double Clicking a Drawer or Folder Expands All Subfolders. I'm going to select that option and say OK. And what that gives me is the ability to double click on any folder or drawer, and all of the folders inside of it are going to expand automatically. For example, if I come here to this Discovery folder and double click on the name, the whole folder expands. Double clicking it again collapses the folder. Now I will note, because this confuses some users, we do have the plus and minus over here which continue to work as normal, meaning it only expands that level or collapses that level. If I want the full expansion or the full collapsing, I double click on the name itself. Now the same thing works inside of the drawer. If I double click on the drawer, the whole drawer is going to expand. And so that's a really nice, really easy way to quickly expand all of the folders inside of a selected folder or inside of the drawer. Now one handy feature that isn't necessarily very obvious is the ability to change the way your files are sorted. Now if I'm in Details view, which shows these columns of information, I can change the way my files are sorted by just clicking on a column header. For example, if I click on Date Modified right here, it switches to sorting the files by this modified date in ascending order. Now if I want to flip that so it's sorting in descending order, the newest documents on first and the oldest ones on the bottom, I click this column header again and it reverses the order of sorting. And now if I want to switch back to sorting by name, I just click the name column header. Now that works great for files, but what if I don't use the details view for my files? Or, what if I want to change the way that my drawer names or folders are sorted? And the answer to that is the Display button right here above the list of your files. This dialog contains all of your display options for drawers, folders, and files. And here you can very quickly and easily change the way things are sorted and the way they're displayed. Here I can choose the sort order not just of my files, but of my drawers and folders as well. Additionally, I can choose the value that my files are going to sort on. Not necessarily name, but I can also sort by the type of file, the date modified, or even the size of the file. Additionally, here I can choose what display style I use for my files. I have it set to details right now, which shows those different columns of information, but perhaps I like icons better. What we're going to take a look at really quickly here is the two different thumbnails options. Now, if you're using File Center Standard, you only have one option, and that's just regular thumbnails. And that's going to show you whatever kind of thumbnail you would see in Windows Explorer. But if you're using File Center Professional, you have an additional option called Enhanced Thumbnails that's going to give you a nice thumbnail image for many, many kinds of documents, even those that you wouldn't normally see in Windows Explorer. In fact, let's select that really quickly and see what it looks like. Here you'll notice we've got nice thumbnail images, not just of image files, but also PDFs, some Word documents, and even an Outlook email message that I archived to files. Now one nice aspect of the Enhanced Thumbnails feature is that I can actually scroll through the pages of the file using these arrow keys up here on the main toolbar.
Now, is it possible to change the size of those thumbnails? And the answer is absolutely. In fact, you probably already saw the setting here on the, dis on the uh, Display Options dialog. Here's a thumbnail size slider right here, where I can enlarge the thumbnails or reduce the size of them. Now, I'm going to switch back to Details mode, and now we're going to take a look at another option, which is Filters. If you've got folders with many, many, many files in them, Sometimes it's useful to hide all of the files except the type of file you want to work with. And that's where filters come into, into play. What filters do is they let you select a file type and only display that file type. For example, let's say that I only want to show PDF files and uh, maybe JPEG files. I double click those. You can also use these arrows to add it to the list. The active filters list here this basically just indicates the types of file that I'm going to be allowed to see. Once I click OK, you notice that all of a sudden my list of files has been reduced to just PDF files and that one JPEG file. Now, if I want to change the filter, click Display again, come over here to Filters. I can clear those, and maybe now all I want to see is, uh, is Word documents, for example. So that's going to show doc files, the docx files, that's what the star is. It's a little wild card that says, you know, any character after this point. So that's going to show all of my different Word document styles. And then maybe I also want to see my Excel spreadsheets. I'll click OK. And now I'm seeing just doc, Word docs and that one Excel spreadsheet. Now you'll notice over here that this icon shows a filter. That means my display is currently being filtered. If I want to turn off filtering, I can use the drop arrow here. That's going to be cut off for you. But turn off filtering here at the bottom. Or I can come back to the display dialog and come to filters and turn off filtering. Or I could just clear my list of filters. When I click OK, you notice that the icon here has changed back to the regular display icon, indicating to me that I am viewing all of my files. Now those are just a few of the most common features, but the ones that are really going to help you get started using your cabinets effectively. We also encourage you to turn to the user guide, which is full of information about many other features that we don't have time to cover in these videos.